This episode is about a man who thought it would be cool to form an entire orchestra from strangers found carrying musical instruments on the London underground. Mad, right? Meet Sean Basil. Sean is a London-based musician who also does what he likes to call musical challenges. These usually involve him showing up somewhere and forming pop-up orchestras out of people who usually never met before. And by summer, I mean Glastonbury Festival, recording studio in Paris, or this space. Oh, it's so beautiful. Hi Sean, how are you? Uh, yeah, I'm doing alright, thank you. Yeah, yeah, and yourself? Yeah, good, good. Um, is it strange to be talking over the Zoom just to one person? <laughs> um, not particularly. Um, obviously, m the majority of the calls I'm doing are with just one one to one people, and then uh, occasionally, obviously, getting quite a few more. What we've started to do. This is myself and my colleague Erik Nyberg, who's in Sweden. Um, we've started to do like a Zoom call music videos. So basically, just getting a bunch of musicians together and doing uh, a music video on Zoom. We did one over Christmas, uh, a cover of The Pretenders' 2,000 Miles. Seemed to go pretty well. Uh, and then, yeah, we're looking at doing a few more this year, I think. So I've mentioned briefly your London Underground Challenge, which was one of the first ones that you did. Um, however, instead of jumping straight to it, let's just start with the most recent gigs of yours. Um, understandingly, the pandemic and, and lockdowns meant a long pause, but uh, before that, you performed at the what it's still known as the last Glastonbury Festival, which was in 2019. Yeah, yeah. So that's quite strange, actually, th thinking about how how long ago that was and the fact that that was the last Glastonbury. You know, I've I've done it a few times now at Glastonbury. It's always amazing, but it's always very tricky because you can't rehearse properly with the musicians. Uh, the last show we did in 2019 at the last Glastonbury, we played at the Rabbit Hole stage and it was only 20 musicians, I think. The previous time we played was at the, we opened the Glade stage for the festival and that was bigger stage, more musicians, no rehearsals. Um, most of the musicians had never met until, well, they hadn't met until that day, at about an hour before we go on stage to perform. Uh, the pianist was missing, so she couldn't make it. She ended up having to work at Glastonbury, so she wasn't available for the performance. Uh, so after the first song, I just shouted out to the audience. We had, you know, a few thousand people there. I just shouted out, does anyone play piano? And uh, this guy sort of went, yeah, me. I was like, yeah, come on up on stage then and play. We got the music. And uh, he just came up and the crowd went wild because I think they realised that that's how the connection is there, that it is just, you know, whoever's about and we just hope for the best. And on, on paper, it should be rubbish. It really should be because musicians that haven't rehearsed, we have no idea what the quality is like. But what people forget, and one of the reasons that this works, is it is very, very rare to get an unskilled musician who's willing to put themselves in that position and and make a fool of themselves really so it, it is people who have a level of competence that know they can do it um, and it's also sometimes we get some of the best musicians ever because they're just like you know what I I normally have to rehearse everything forever and it's like you know work and this is just like hey I'm using my skill and it's fun um, so we are we are super lucky in that sense and yeah. um, what about their Paris challenge Oh, but yeah, Paris was a particularly tough one because it was a different environment to what we'd done before. Um, often we get musicians together and we perform live, we play, what's and all, doesn't matter about mistakes, we disappear and then that's done. Paris was very, very different in the fact that we went there to record an album, so it had to, you know, be at least a bit better than normal um, because we, we wouldn't have chance to remove the mistakes. Um, we had 10 days to form the orchestra uh, and then we had 27 musicians had to record 12 songs in six hours uh, and yeah it was it was tough many of the musicians had only seen the music on the day of the studio we were lucky that we got a few rehearsals in during those 10 days so a bunch of the musicians turned up we were incredibly lucky to get an, a phenomenal drummer and an amazing bass player so this rhythm section that just like nailed it down 
um, just made everything. That's what you really need in those kind of projects. It's just a core rhythm section that's going to hold it tight. Uh, and yeah, it just it just worked. Um, the idea alone. <laughs> did you just wake up one day and then thought, oh, I think I'm going to go to Paris, but not to see Eiffel Tower, but form an actual <laughs> orchestra? <laughs> um, I, I don't really remember how we come up with these ideas. I really, I don't know how any of those challenges that I've done have, have come up with, like how we've come up with them. Sometimes people come up with a suggestion and they're like, oh, wouldn't that be fun? Um, and I'm like, yeah. And then other times they, uh, I just come up, I just think, oh, what, what about trying this? Whatever the cost, no goodbyes, no regrets. Keep your head up and never forget. How about the final album? Is it um, available anywhere to, to, to listen? It, it isn't at the moment. Um, we're just finishing the documentary. And then the plan is that we will get the album out at the same time. Um, I'm hoping that we will have both of them out by let's say june june this year um yeah that is that's my plan it's on record now <laughs> funny you mentioned june um yeah. cause first of all let's just make it clear um we're not really moving into like uh, <laughs> intimate topics but in june there will be a fifth birthday <laughs> of your penis yeah happy birthday to my dick <laughs> we were doing the 10 day orchestra challenge which was a challenge around the uk where we had to travel 10 days um, forming 10 different orchestras across 10 different cities so it was really really difficult it was quite a stressful thing and I was like what can I do to make it more enjoyable and then Brexit happened and I was like oh just England's just we're just dicks for doing what we did so I thought I looked at the tour route and I decided it was possible to draw it in the shape of a giant cock and balls across the whole of the UK and Scotland uh, England and Scotland. It was 400 plus miles, um, the largest GPS penis that I know had been drawn. And we, we had a, a little tracker as well. So there was, um, people could track it. They could watch us as we were doing it. The whole thing got drawn live. Um, yeah, it was um, pretty amazing. <laughs> Now we're at the 12-12-12 uh, challenge, which was, um, yes. like you described to me uh, before, the toughest one of them all, and um, after which all the ones that we just talked about seemed relatively <laughs> easy. Yeah, so uh, it's definitely the hardest one that I've done. That was to form an entire orchestra out of strangers that I met on the London Underground, purely through them carrying an instrument. So no recruitment process. I couldn't just uh, ask people to, to turn up. I had to go physically find them. So I spent every day on the underground for pretty much a whole year, 314 days. There were certainly some people that were just super rude. Um, it's really interesting actually. The, we, we put up some stuff on YouTube, just little snippets of when, when I was doing it. And there was one that caught the attention of a lot of people. So the rule was if I saw someone, I had to go speak to them. And I was walking down the escalators with the cameraman because we were filming it. Um, and I was like, is that a flute over there? So I had to run up the escalator and all the way back down to try and get to this flautist. Um, and as I was running back down the escalator, I ran past a guy with what looked like a sort of bassoony violin sort of case. Uh, and I, I said, sorry, is that like a bassoon or a violin? Um, and he went, it's actually none of your business. It's a, it's a violin, but now will you go away, please? And I just felt so, like I felt so embarrassed that I forgot what I was doing and walked the other way, like off the escalator and just didn't even remember that I was meant to be trying to find this flautist. It was like mortifying. It was horrible. Um, but the fascinating thing was, I used to do um, a show that I took to the Edinburgh Festival um, and sort of did around, which was a talk and presentation on the challenge, the difficulties of approaching people, um, all of the different like snippets of things that we did, because it was quite a fascinating thing, I think. Um, one of the bits that we showed in the show was this guy. When he got put on YouTube, um, people were calling him the violin wanker. That was the nickname they gave him. And there was this big discussion about, oh, you know, lots of classical people are really snobby and he's stuck up. And I was like, hang on a minute. Like, I basically walked up to him as a random stranger and said, is that a really expensive instrument on your back? You know, he didn't have to, he did say it's none of my business, which is true. He didn't have to then tell me it was a violin. And he didn't have to say please at the end when he said, now will you go away, please? Like, actually, when you think about it, he probably treated me with more respect than a lot of the internet treated him. Um, and that was the way that I would often put it when I was doing the show. Um, and one time I was doing the show, I did a preview before going to Edinburgh, I did a preview in Camden and sat right at the front was this chap. 
which was absolutely unbelievable. So it was just, it was this really weird thing. Someone had seen me at Edinburgh, um, who was friends with him, had told him about it. He then came to the next show, not to confront me, but just out of curiosity. And he was a lovely chap. It was really, really nice. And he said, yeah, and he he said to me, um, he said, you know, if I'd have known what it was you were doing, I, I would have probably joined. It sounded like a, a lot of fun. Um, and it just sort of, for me, it was a, a little lesson, you know, that we never know what, when people are about to approach us, um, we never know what they're going to be asking for. But in the end, uh, you ended up succeeding. Yep. Um, how many musicians you found? Uh, we got uh, 68 musicians in the end and did a one-off show at Shepherd's Bush Empire, um, which was phenomenal. Me, and distance still binds me, but I keep running away. Say what I wanted, my mind is still haunted by you. It's always been you. All of those musicians, the one thing that they all had in common is that they were kind enough to stop and talk to me. So we had this orchestra filled with really lovely, sociable, kind hearted people. Um, it was the most amazing experience. Uh, What's your next challenge then? I never know what the challenges are beforehand. Um, probably because if I did, that would be too much preparation. Um, I try and focus. For me, the focus at the moment is to finish the documentary that we did about Paris. It's been four years since we did the Paris challenge. We have a film that is, as, as you saw, you know, it's pretty much finished. Um, so we just need to just go through and just edit a few bits, make it a, a little bit uh, more palatable for people. Um, so no one wants to sit through two hours of me trying to find musicians so we'll make it about 90 minutes long um, and hopefully release it in June. Sean thank you so much um, it's been a great pleasure chatting to you um, looking forward to hear the Paris album and um, yeah um, all the best. Uh, uh, thank you very much. That's so everything for now but before you go subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so we can meet again when I'll be talking to another London based act, a songwriting duo called Burn. Until then, goodbye.